welcome back to the second part of how to create a blend space. Today we will finish up the animation blueprint by adding our second blend space and then add some functionality to toggle between the two. So let's continue. So the next part is we need to make the second blend space for our aiming down sights. So we'll right click, go to animation. This time we choose a blend space that's not one dimensional but two dimensional. We choose the starter skeleton. We name it BS for blend space and we call this one aim. Save that one, open it up. So like we spoke earlier, this is the same blend space area, only now you can see that there are two axes, one from 0 to 100 from down to up, one from left to right. So this works the same way as the one dimensional one, it just has two axes. And it'll become clear here once we add some animations. So first we'll start off with finding our aim animations here. So if we have... Um, walk forward rifle iron sights. We'll drag this one and now we get to choose where to put it. For me personally I feel that the top middle should represent that pretty well. And next to that we need to have something that goes left and right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see the zero point here as this will represent the same axis as the first blend space except for the aiming of course. So our zero will be down here, so this is where we will add an idle. So we find an idle rifle iron sights and we add it down here. And now we have the transition that we had with the one dimensional blend space. Now we need to add strafing. So we have our walk LT which is left rifle iron sights, we put that to the left. Then we have one that says RT, which represents right. We'll put that on the bottom right. Now if we start blending towards these directions, we can see how this character starts strafing to the left and starts strafing to the right. Let us go back to our animation blueprint. We'll start off by going to either the anim graph or the state machine and we'll add another state. We'll call this one aiming. There. And we want to be able to transition from jogging idle to aiming and also back again. But we haven't anything to determine how to transition between these states yet. So we'll add a variable. We'll call it is aiming. There we go. And we'll make it a boolean. Compile save. We will double click on the transition from jogging to aiming. And we will say that if aiming is true, then we enter this transition. Compile save. We'll go back to the state machine again. And we double click on the transition from aiming to jogging this time. We'll take the same boolean, drag it in here, but we'll add a not after it, meaning we will be using the negative for this. So when we're not aiming, this is true, which means we can enter the trans transition to go back to jogging again. Okay, so this is all set up good now for our means. Next, we will be going and entering some new things into our event blueprint for update animations. So we spoke over earlier about how we needed the forward vector and we wanted the dot product. So let's talk a little bit about that. Because we want, what we want to do now is we want to get actor right vector. And we want to take the velocity once more, copy paste that. And we want to take a dot product and then hook them up like so. Okay, 
So what this means is we want to have a slightly different moving scheme when it comes to aiming down sights compared to when you're running around just freeform. The way we do this is by checking where the character has its forward direction and its right direction and from that it's trying to determine how much of a percentage we're moving in that direction. Meaning if we're moving totally to the right then we will get all of our speed to the right and if we're moving totally forward we'll get all our speed forward and if we're doing something in between it will be divided among them. So from here we get our forward speed. From this one we'll get our right speed. So we'll add a variable saying right speed. Make that a float. Set this variable up in the graph by hooking it from the second dot product. Compile and save. Now we need to add a way for us to communicate to the blueprint that we are actually aiming. In this case we'll just make it easy for us and we'll right click and make a custom event. Call it set aiming. We'll add an input. We'll call it is aiming. Now we set our boolean to be whatever we send into this method, event, compile, save. We go back to our third person character starter. So let's create a few events here. Let's right click with a custom event, call this start jogging. Right click, create another one call this one start aiming. Okay, so these two blend spaces will act in quite different ways, which means that we have to change how our character movement component works. So what we need to do is when we aim, we want to change a few parameters. So if we go to character movement component, and we search for rotation. We can find use controller design rotation and orient rotation to movement. Both of these we want to inverse when we're aiming and we want to set them back again when we're jogging. So desired rotation second one is orient rotation to movement. We'll hook that one up there as well. Okay, so now we have both of the parameters that we want to change here. We will make sure that they are all properly hooked up. Clean this up a little bit like so. Then we check what they are currently at. So when we're jogging, we have control of the side rotation to false, which it is here. So we want the other one to be true. And then orient rotation to true for jogging and false when aiming. Okay, save, compile. Now this isn't all. We also need to add some kind of feature to allow our character to actually change between these two modes. So we could use an input, but to make it simple for today, we will just be adding, let's say, left shift. So when left shift is pressed, we will start aiming, and when left sh shift is released, we will go back to being our normal jogging state. So we need to, uh, from pressed, I'll start aiming and from released start jogging. So that will allow us to transition between the two uh, modes of having different uh, 
parameters available on our character movement component. But this is not enough. We also need to communicate to the animation blueprint that we have started to aim, so that the animation blueprint knows to change the state from jogging to aiming and vice versa. We do this by dragging a reference to our mesh. Get anim instance. We can cast this to starter should get us the animation blueprint that we made earlier. Make a copy for the other one as well. There we go. And then we call on the event over there that's called set aiming. The top one is aiming, compile and save. So now all the properties should be set for our blend space when it comes to aiming and we should be notifying the animation blueprint. However, we didn't set up in the blueprint animation that we are actually going to use the new blue blend space for aiming. So we'll go back to the state that is for aiming and we'll add blend space aim. And we'll hook that up. And now you can notice that we haven't actually named the parameters that are inputted into this. We'll fix that immediately now by going to the blend space. So we determined that we have one axis that goes vertical. That, that's supposed to be our forward speed. So we'll name that one forward speed. The right one is going from left to right. So we'll name that one right speed. And for the same reason as before, we'll change the max values to 600 for max in both of these. But we will do something slightly different for right speed, because right speed standing still is zero. So that means it would never actually start blending towards left, so we need to have the minimum value for right speed to be minus 600, meaning we're going left instead of right full speed. We'll save these changes, we'll go back to the blueprint. They have updated, we'll hook up our two speeds. Compile and save. While we're handling the blend space for aim, we also need to do some other changes because as it is currently, we have changed the parameters, making that the camera will sort of be fixed from behind the character when it starts to aim. Which means that when we're pressing backwards, it won't actually allow us to go backwards since we don't have an animation for back. So what we will do is we'll move the idle from being in the bottom to the middle. And we'll move the left strafing up two slots and the right strafing two slots. And then we'll find a walk backwards rifle iron sights to put in the bottom. This will allow us to actually move backwards as well when we're moving backwards when the cam camera is uh, locked behind us. So we'll press save and that should be it. Now that we've made this change however, we need to make one other altercation. Uh, not altercation, one less slight alteration. We'll need to go back to, uh, let's see, our blend space for aim. Because now we add that we should actually be able to move backwards. When zero will be standing still, that will not make sense. We actually need to have a minus 600 for to denote that we're actually moving backwards in this state. So minus 600 will be moving backwards and zero will be standing still, which should more accurately represent the inputs that we can send to the character. So let's go back to the map. Let us try it out play. We move around with WASD and you see that we, we can move in whichever direction that we're pressing. But as soon as we hold in shift, character will start aiming and will strafe and we'll have the camera as its rotation on where, which direction to aim towards. And we're done. Hopefully
Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments down below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.